Today I sit down with Kevin Malcolm from Freet and Scoop. This is Headphones Recommended. Cool. So, hey, it's Michael with Headphones Recommended. Thanks for tuning in. I am sitting down today with Kevin Malcolm, uh, owner of Freet and Scoop. Yep. Kevin, Hi. thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, we're just going to, yeah, as normal, we're just going to jump right in. So, please. Who would you like folks to know about you? Who are you? What is your uh, episode number one? Um, it feels like my episode number, my, to go into comic book phase, uh, I had a reboot when, when I moved to Astoria. Uh -huh. I had an entirely different life in uh, Seattle. Uh, I actually came from Illinois to, in the year 2000, moved out to Seattle uh, to be near my, uh, my brother and his wife and my niece. Uh, spent a good, what uh, would be 14 years in Seattle, mm -hmm. um, doing jobs I didn't like. Okay. Um, what are some examples of those? I worked as a receptionist yeah. at, at it. Oh, sorry, we don't have to name businesses. Oh, no, 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 actually, yeah, 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 no. But uh, what, were the, what were the jobs? Uh, a re receptionist at a one of the largest uh, janitorial co uh, companies in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, I had just one of their at, at their Seattle branch. I was. So I handed out checks and answered phones and things like that. Yeah, uh, that was pretty terrible. Uh, <laughs> not in a, you know, it's not in a bad way. It's a, it's a great job for people, uh, but it wasn't something that I had any passion in. And and you and the how do I say this? The the line through my working life until 2014, when I opened my own business, was I was a terrible employee. Uh, because I, I, you know, I never finished college. You know, I went to college for four years, but I, I, I never could figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and so eventually, just stopped going, and just full stop. Just full stop. Drop out. I didn't want to waste my dad's money anymore. Oh, okay, that's um, fair. I was lucky enough to have that where you know the other people have had to take out loans. At least I didn't have to take out a loan um, for to waste. Yeah, X amount of dollars. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I know nothing about that. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so I took a bunch of jobs where I wasn't very good. It's kind of like my school career. I was I was middling because I could get away with being middling. I was smart enough to just kind of cruise through. Uh -huh. uh, same with the jobs, um, you know, because I didn't care. Yeah. And in two, my last job was doing. Accounts payable, accounts receivable for a medical device company that I always like saying this that that made a device that was a non-invasive alternative to liposuction using high-intensity focused ultrasound. Uh, it was I, a, I got all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a and so I, I did accounts payable, accounts receivable for them, and at some point they were bought out by another company, and I survived that buyout. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they were bought. That company was bought out by someone else, and I didn't survive that buyout. Okay. And um, I, you know, when my boss sat me down and said, I have terrible news, I told her, Nancy, that's not terrible news. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you I, don't. I said, do you, I said, do you have a uh, severance for me? She said, yep. Great. Awesome. I, that, that's great. And uh, I, you know, I, I was able to be there until the end of the year. And then I told my, you know, I told my wife, uh, I said, I don't think I ever want to do that ever again. And so she said, well, don't. Awesome. And um, yeah, like that was, that was eye opening mm -hmm. to think that I could decide not to just have a crappy job. Yeah. Um, so we were, I was in a position where I didn't have to work for a few years. Uh, or I, I think the original plan was for me not to work for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, for just to figure out what I wanted to do, uh, I luckily I I had the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lisa was uh, going to school, going to pastry school at the time, and during that time, got a job as well. And I'm going to sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Lisa is oh sorry, Lisa is my wife, wife and, my wife. and also co-owner co -owner of Free uh, Scoop. Yeah, she she's president of everything here. I'm, I like to call myself the scoop monkey because I just make the ice cream. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm more of a face than, than she is only by 
choice, uh -huh. uh, but she does everything behind the scenes and, and also in, in in front of everyone. But yeah. you know, um, yeah. So I feel like "scoop monkey" is one of those phrases where it's okay for you to say it about yourself, but it feels like grossly offensive to say it about well, somebody else. It, well, it is, <laughs> well, and I take it from the the Jonathan Colton song "Code Monkey." Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that no, song. Jo no, Jonathan Colton me. is a uh, a, a singer, a singer songwriter who kind of much more successfully did what I did. He was a computer programmer, and one day he and he was, you know, he played guitar his whole life, and he decided he didn't want to do that anymore. So uh -huh. he started writing songs, and he, he's a big nerd, uh, a, a, a big, big in the nerd community, I yeah. guess. And he wrote a song called Code Monkey, which is all about writing code for a living. And, uh, uh, here you are. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, now, awesome. now to the to my employees, I'm the scoop boss. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know, self-deprecatingly, yeah. I'm the, the scoop monkey. Anyway, um, so so we're gonna go back. You've yeah. You, you you took a little bit of time off. I took some time off, and, and I did a lot of things during that time. Yeah. I yeah, I painted. Uh, you know, terribly. I painted. Uh -huh. uh, I you know I try. I I did the things that you're supposed to do. I tried writing. I, you know, I love comic books, and I tried writing them. Uh, you know, and you know, I was lucky, lucky enough to be in some sort of uh, roller derby collection of books at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but that was the most I ever did um, yeah. with with a character. Uh, and you know, I like doing it, but I, ne I but it kind of like with everything else, I never had the focus to do it to just sit down. Like yeah. you, you hear about writers who can just sit down and write for five, six hours, and uh -huh. you know. I could never do that. I would yeah. always get distracted. Yeah. And one day I was, you know, my wife was at work at the cupcake shop that she was working at and I was, I got a hair to, to go wander off at Bed Bath & Beyond. Mm -hmm. I, you know, when you when you haven't worked at this point, it's been about two years. I hadn't had a job and I'd just been, been a house husband. Yeah. Um, you know, I went and went to the store and was wandering around there, maybe getting some towels for us. I don't remember. But I saw they had a one of those uh, KitchenAid frozen bowl ice cream makers. Okay. And I've always loved ice cream. I always, uh, you know, that was always a dessert for me. I my first job was at an ice cream shop uh, in in Illinois, and so I texted my wife and said, "Hey, do you mind if I spend fifty bucks on on this? You know, we already had a, a KitchenAid." Because uh -huh. uh, she's a baker, and it's like, can I do you mind if I get this this you know this ice cream maker? She said, sure, why not? Uh -huh. Yeah. So I did, and I you know again, I don't know if you know much about these things. You basically, it's a bowl that has a a liquid inside that freezes uh, over about a period of about eighteen hours in, in your just like home freezer. Yeah. And then uh, when that's frozen, you you make uh, you make a custard or make your ice cream mix, put it in the bowl, and Basically, the the coldness of, of the bowl freezes the freezes it while it spins in and it makes ice cream. Yeah. But you can only use that once because once that 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 uh, temperature has been transferred from the from the bowl into the ice cream, it's not as cold anymore. So you you would then have to freeze it again for 18 hours if you wanted to use it again. Yeah. Super convenient. Well, it's good for home use. Like yeah. If, if you're <laughs> if you're going to make ice cream for the Super Bowl or something, whatever, or the big game, uh, they. It's great, you know. It makes about a quart, totally fine. I, I really liked making ice cream. Uh -huh. Almost immediately, I, I thought, oh, this is fun, and I got really frustrated that I would have to wait, you know, minimum of 12, 18 hours, and yeah. I want to make it now. Uh -huh. um, I've always been impatient like that, and so, not more than a week, week and a half later, I texted my wife at work. I've been looking on Amazon. Uh -huh. I said. Sent her a screenshot. Hey, do you mind if I buy this five hundred dollar ice cream machine? <laughs> so ten times as much, and it was this little machine about yay wide, and it has half of it was a compressor, uh -huh. uh, like an AC compressor, and then the other, you know, this like three quarters and a quarter. The quarter was just this little quart thing that would uh, basically it meant that I could make ice cream as much as I wanted to, yeah. because it would only it would take about thirty minutes uh, to churn, which wow. is which isn't ideal. But it's better than having to wait 18 hours or yeah. whatever. Um, so I did that, and I started making a lot of ice cream, and I started passing it on to people, uh, and because I was making too much to actually 
uh, safely myself. <laughs> safely. And uh, it, during that time, it was about Christmas of 2013, my wife and I came down to Long Beach uh, right the day after Christmas. Because you guys were still in Seattle. We were still in Seattle okay. at this point. We were in yeah. West Seattle um, White Center. And, um, and we, we just, I still had no idea what I wanted to do. I, uh -huh. I, I was reaching that point where I was like, oh, I should probably find a job. Uh -huh. um, and, and spending all this money on ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, and giving it away. Uh -huh. And, you know, we, we had a few days in Long Beach and we had, neither her nor I had ever been to uh, Astoria. Mm -hmm. And so we just took a day trip, uh, brought our dogs along with us. And About when was this? Uh, December 28th of 2014. That was, that was, that's, that was more specific than I thought I was going to get. But yeah. it, it, it pops up in Facebook every year because uh, <laughs> the, the post I put on Facebook at the time was, We've, looked, we've we've just went to Astoria for the first time, and I think Lisa wants to move here. Yeah. And it was a joke, but it turned out not to be. Yeah. Uh, we were we both kind of fell in love with it. We loved it here. And I, at the time, looked around because I was making ice cream, and I was like, "Is there any homemade ice cream in town?" I just because mostly because I wanted to see what theirs tasted like. Yeah. And I couldn't find any homemade ice cream in town. So that kind of just percolated in the back of my head. Yeah. And. We took a couple. It's one of those things where we didn't talk about it for a couple months because I, both of us was, was a little afraid to think that we would be moving from Seattle. Mm -hmm. And you know, at some point, we were watching I don't know Home and Garden TV or something like that, uh, where people were buying houses everywhere. And we, one of us said, "Hey, what do you think houses are in the story? How expensive do you think those are?" And so then we started looking at houses. So were you both thinking about it, but hadn't talked to each other I at think all? Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's been a few years, but I think it was it was in the book back of both of our heads. We uh -huh. were we weren't taking advantage of Seattle like we had in our youth. Yeah, uh, you know, Lisa had been in Seattle since the mid '90s. She was part of she was a tertiary part of the culture that was going on in in Seattle in that in that time. She uh -huh. you know she worked with. Chris Novoselic's uh, sister, uh, at, you know, at, uh, at a at a clothing shop, yeah. you know, and, you know, so she kind of sort of knew all these people. She, you know, she uh, she was the she was also the, the manager at the Urban Outfitters on Capitol Hill. And whenever Kurt or Courtney Love came in came to the shop, she had to be the one to take them around the shop. Uh -huh. So you know, like, like so she was she had been in Seattle yeah. at Seattle at peak Seattle uh -huh. of, of that kind of thing. Super it, cash. She hung out with yeah, her and Courtney. And, right. Yeah. You know, whatever. And and but at some point she, you know, we both stopped. You know, we weren't going to ball games anymore. We weren't, weren't going to. We just weren't. We weren't going to shows anymore. We're too old. So we just were stopped. We're done with Seattle. It's a lovely place, and a lot of people should should live there. A lot of people do, but we're just done. And so, I'm sorry if it's taking longer. This no, is, this is a, it's a longer. It's a two or three issue origin story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so we we started looking at, and at the possibility of moving to Astoria, but Astoria is a place where if you're not in the fishing industry, if you're not the, in the logging industry, or if you're not in the hospital industry, you better make your own way. Yeah. Uh, if if you want, you know, or at some point you need to make your own way. And we were at the age where we felt like we had to. So uh, we came on a couple extra trips down here and saw that. Confirmed. Yep, there's definitely no homemade ice cream. What would that look like? Yeah. What would it look like if we did that? And did it? You know, it's we. You know, we we looked for locations. We were lucky enough to find this location. Yeah, it's the perfect location, especially in the summertime to sell ice cream. It's right up the river walk, right up the river where everyone's walk uh, walking. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you, like when I um, so I moved to Astoria a little over three years ago. Now. Right, um, and when I when I moved over to the area, I did all of the touristy shit that you know, like you would expect. Sure. Right. One of the things is the uh, they have a trolley that runs along the river walk, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, and the trolley guy who was like tour guiding, he was really nice and he was really sweet. But he's like, oh yeah, over here is like a story of Berlin, and like over here is this location, and over here is this one. He got within a quarter mile of Freedom Scoop, mm -hmm. and 
that's all he talked about for like the next 15 minutes, right? Yeah, like as we're going by, like this 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 location right here. If you haven't been in here, this is the place to be. But this is the greatest ice cream that I've ever tasted. I remember the first time I showed up at Freight and Scoop, and oh yeah, yeah, they are our unofficial marketing department. They they are they're killing. I don't I don't I'm not suggesting any percentage, but. Uh, maybe a maybe a good fist bump every once in a while. <laughs> or well, ride the trolley. That's the, what I'm saying. The, ride the trolley. The, 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 yeah, the trolley. We treat the trolley drivers well. I'm good. <laughs> we, we do. Uh, be, be, they're and they're they're an important part of the the, the weird character of the story. Uh -huh. And I'm glad they like us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's perfect. So I'm kind of like I really like the idea that you you decided to be able to take that time off. Right. Yeah. It's going to start as a year. It ended up being longer than that. And, it, and the whole time you're, you're describing what you're going through, I'm just I'm really just recognizing that here's a creative who's just searching for their passion, right? Yeah, and I, exactly. And I love the idea that you ended up in a Bed Bath and Beyond. Like, there's something almost tragic about it. <laughs> like, I mean, well, I, you know, I, I felt that way. It, it, it was very weird because like, two years was was almost too much. There were I felt like I was losing my mind at some point, uh -huh. uh, and I thought I would never get tired of not working. Uh, at, my, at my core, I'm a lazy person. Yeah, and uh, and so yeah, I could fully see that. You know, I was just kind of wandering around because I had nothing more to do, but I certainly didn't want to work. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So and so and you guys just came together and decided, you know what, ice cream. When like when did it go from just yeah, there's there's no homemade ice cream in the area. Um, we really we're really digging the vibe in Astoria, and this is kind of where we feel like we want to be. Um, real quick, we got a couple more minutes before yeah, we yeah. take a break. What was when did the meat actually happen? Like when did you actually start putting like meat in the plan, and and the idea of what Free and Scoop is now really started to take shape uh, relatively quickly because we I, I said December of 2013 that we moved that we. Did, Kate visited here for the first time, we were here with a spot to rent by July of 2014. So wow. six months later. Uh -huh. and, and we took about two months off to not talk about it yeah. in the beginning. So it was around March that we started, if we were going to do this, what are we going to do? Do we want to do just ice cream? That's that's all my wife because she wants, she has, she's visionary. She thinks uh -huh. of things. And, yeah. and she has been per chasing the perfect freight, freight uh, ever since visiting Amsterdam when she was in her 20s and never can find it and so she's like well, what if we everyone loves salty and sweet together like what if we just did fries and ice cream and i suggested uh scoop and frit and she's like no it's yeah. frit and scoop it's and that and that's it right uh, and, then, and then from there it was figuring out how to make that work yeah uh, how do you make fries uh how do you make ice cream in large quantities uh, a lot of it's throwing a lot of money at it uh, <laughs> but I want to get into that, yeah. and let's talk about that in more detail. Um, I'm so enjoying this. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, sure. and then when we come back, I want to hear about you know what was it like opening the doors for the first time? What what did it take to be able to open those doors? What are the lessons that you needed to learn? And then what's been the experience of operating uh, a location that's now becoming almost iconic that's, over that's in the historic very area? High. And so yeah. it's a you to ask the trolley guy. Yeah, okay, so we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Perfect. All right. We are back from the break. Thanks for tuning right. in. Um, so as we were leaving, um, we were really talking about, like, you've got the concept for Freak and Scoop. Um, you've, you, you're, you're starting to get the location. Uh, what did it take to actually open Freak and Scoop? Uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of money. Um, there were... Uh, but and everyone has different uh, resources for mm -hmm. that, whether it's, whether it's bank loans or or family or whatever. Yeah. Um, that obviously that that is a huge barrier to a lot of people's dreams, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, and uh, fortunately, we were lucky enough to to have the ability to to open the shop. It was basically buy a house or start a business yeah. and we went back and forth on whether or not which one we wanted to do first uh -huh. uh, but felt that the responsible thing is probably to open the business first because we never knew if someone else was going to come into town make an ice cream hit first yeah and so yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's all about house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the reality is of business owners. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to. I do want to say real quick for those watching, those listening. We are in the ice cream shop right now, and so you'll hear the sound of refrigerators in the background. It is an active place. How many refrigerators do you say? Uh, it says nine, I think. Nine, uh, right. nine fridges and freezers. Uh, yeah, that, what's going on right now is our soft serve machine, and that just so cycled on. You'll, you'll hear a little hum. It's part of the reality of, of being inside the ice cream shop. Yeah. So, the, uh, so, still not house, but, um, so, raising money, right? Sure. I mean, like, hat in hand, like, friends and family, did you go to venture capitalists and no. ask for investments? What'd you do? No, uh, uh <laughs> frankly, uh, my father passed away. And uh, I had no, no, it's, it's I, no, yeah. and that's why I didn't want to say it. Like I don't want to. It, it, it's not an thing. <laughs> no, it's, it's you know my, my father you know passed away in 2011, uh, which is uh, and basically through uh, things he thoughtfully let uh, uh, gave to me and my two brothers uh, on his passing, uh, we were I was able to. Basically, turned some of that into free, mm -hmm. and uh, and that, that you know that's what allowed me to not to not work for a couple of years. Yeah. It certainly wasn't you know it's not I'm not you know Scrooge McDuck you know diving into my vault you know yeah uh, it was enough basically to open up to to take a couple of years off and while my wife still worked and also uh, liquidate some and, and turn it into. A yeah, for the millennials and the Generation Y that may be watching this, Scrooge McDuck's is a DuckTales reference. Oh no, Duck, Duck, DuckTales <laughs> is on is on the new Disney Channel. Is it back? Yeah, yeah they, uh, um, who is the the Doctor Who? One of the Doctor Who's plays Scrooge McDuck now. Really? Uh, yeah, the I can't yeah. Peter Capaldi. No, the one bef two before him or one before him. I can't I can't remember. Okay. Uh, yeah. But I uh, yes. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, <laughs> Kate Micucci uh, from Garfunkel and Oates, and a few other shows uh, is is uh, one of the female ducks, and Huey, Dewey, and Louie are all uh, comedians as well. Uh, it's actually wow. really good. Fun, uh, strong endorsement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna get back. So, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So the um, so you were able to um, not under the greatest of circumstances, but you were able to come into some cash. Yeah. Um, the uh, and so. You've got um, any other like any other reason that you had to do? Because what we want to do is we want to give an honest picture to yeah, well, and, 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 that. and yeah, that's why I don't you know you know fib about that or fudge about that. You know, not everyone is uh, as privileged as, as I was when it comes to that. Uh, you know, um, having that money to start, and then also uh, having basically a, a, an income from it's farm yeah you know and so having an income from that okay. yearly gave us a sense of security that a lot of people don't have yeah. and and you know I don't know if we would have taken the leap without that mm -hmm. it would have been a lot harder and a lot more stressful so maybe and the universe just kind of lines up like that sometimes for stuff. sure yeah. and, and you know and you know I am super grateful and I will never take that for granted because I say that to to say that you know that yes there is a, there we were we were lucky enough to have that obviously a lot of hard work went into this of but, course but no one no no person is an island uh, th there was help from all quarters that helped us get here and okay. we always remember that I guess you know, to be savvy excellent so is this um, so location you're in right now is this the first location that was you the found? first location okay well we found a location on 10th Street that was this that used to be a cupcake shop in Astoria. Uh -huh. And it was great because it had its own hood. I don't know if anyone knows about hoods in restaurants. Uh -huh. uh, but they're one of the most expensive things you can install. Yeah. Uh, at least 20 or 30 grand. Uh, and we, and it was a cupcake shop. It had a hood, but it was really tiny. We were the, no one had called about it for three months. And we were the second person in one day to call, call about it. Hmm. And uh, the guy said, the first guy that called me has dibs. Uh, I said, "Can I come down today, though, and just look at it, just in case?" And he said, "Sure," but he's, someone else has dibs, and so I did. And that other person had the dibs, and it's now a wood flooring showcase. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it's for the best because this location was much better. Awesome. Uh, it's bigger, uh, and we now, now that we know what our needs are, this was the right location. Yeah, and so at this point, you're like you're looking for locations. Did you had you already decided on a menu? Have you already decided as to the services you want to provide? Wait, you guys are just moving fast. We're moving fast, and honestly, it's probably for the best. Uh -huh. um, we not knowing. Knowing now what we didn't know, I feel like Donald Rumsfeld, the known knowns and the known unknowns, <laughs> things like that. Again, 2003, folks. Put up uh, another reference yeah, in the video. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, but if, if we had known all the things we didn't know going into it, it would have been a lot scarier. Yeah. And we may have not done it or done it differently. So like if you would overthought and overplanned and... Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to like, you know what? We're gonna just we're gonna chase passion, and we're going to we're going to handle the problems as they arrive, uh, as they arise. Certainly, that led to stress. Yeah. Uh, but having a partner in order to do that with makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. and having someone to to bounce solutions off of. Yeah. Uh, we we knew what we wanted to do. We were only gonna do fries. We were only gonna do ice cream. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. Uh, from there, we'll figure everything else out. Yeah. And so, what are frites? Why frites, are they? Why are they not just French fries? Frites are Belgian style fries, uh -huh. and there's French style and there's Belgian style. It's about the process of making them. Mm -hmm. American French fries usually are just like kind of American ice cream, uh -huh. uh, like mass-produced American ice cream. Hi, cover your cover your ears, is, McDonald's. Is cheaply made <laughs> and you know mass produced, uh -huh. and not that they, and again, not to be snooty about it. I'll eat a McDonald's fry. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm, I'll happily do that. But if, but you know, we figure if we're only going to do two things, we better do them the best. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Belgian style fi fries, Lisa. And, you know, thought at the time they were the best, and they are. Uh, and and you know, the kind of ice cream I like I like to make I thought was was the best as well. Yeah. Um, not that my ice cream is the best, but you know, it, the style of the way of making ice cream. I have a favorite. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Yeah. But it's and so going back to what frites are, they are uh, basically they're twice. It's how they're treated. The, the potatoes are cut. They're rinsed uh, to get all the starch off of them. Mm -hmm. They are dried and then they're fried once uh, at a low temperature to kind of get them all cooked through. And then when they're ordered, they're fried again. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's the process. It's it's the taking of the time as opposed to yeah uh, buying McDonald's uh -huh. or whatever. So yeah. history lesson. It's my understanding that the reason we do that we have French fry, French fries in America, they're called uh -huh. French fries, is is likely attributed to Thomas Jefferson because he was the ambassador to France uh -huh. uh, right around the time that, that fries were invented. Uh -huh. uh, they were both invented in France and Belgium around the same time. Yeah. Ask ask a Belgian versus a French person who invented them, they'll get an argument. They're gonna fight. Yeah. <laughs> and but but Thomas Jef Jefferson, ambassador to France. One of the very first state men, uh, state dinner menus for when he was president was had potatoes in the French manner, of it, and that's fries. No, yeah, and, <laughs> and so that's you know it, you know it could be a little apocryphal, but that's it, uh -huh. the, the menu is there, so that that's real. Yes, uh, and also actually uh, there the the oldest handwritten recipe for ice cream in an American's hand. Is Thomas Jefferson's recipe for vanilla ice cream. So every time you come to Freight and Scoop, you're actually supporting America well, and our founding fathers. It's, it's, the, 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 just own it. It's okay. The, <laughs> the, the, the less troublesome parts of the founding fathers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. And very carefully worded. Exactly. <laughs> well, well done, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, so um, you're, you're developing your menu, you're putting things together. Um, the uh, uh, experience, any difficulties getting the store open? It was, it was a lot of work. We we arrived in Astoria, got the keys to this location, 
July of 2014. And we didn't open up until October 18th. Okay. So uh, there was a lot of work that Lisa and I did, mostly, uh, you guys can't see this, sanding all these beams. Someone did a disservice to this gorgeous old location and painted all of these old, old growth beams, mm -hmm. and we couldn't have that. Yeah. And so we spent weeks sanding them. Uh, we had eventually had a contractor come in and, and, and build out our shelves and build out our fruitery over there. Fruitery is where you make fruits. Uh -huh. And fruitery. Yeah, okay. it's very European. It is. <laughs> and, you know, he, he built the bar over there, and then it was, you know, you blink and all of a sudden three months are gone. And you realize, yeah. I've spent a lot of money we need to open. Yeah. You know, we, it was fairly quick to get the, uh, the health department involved mm -hmm. and get them to approve us. You know, what, basically, again, it was a good situation of, oh wait, how do you get the health department to, to approve you to open up? Mm -hmm. All right, look it up online, talk to some people. <laughs> you know, make, your, make yourself known. And that's when we really felt like we were in a small town. You go to, you go to the, uh, the county, you go to City Hall, and you tell them what you're doing. You're like, oh yeah, you're in that, you're in, you're in the pilot house, great, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, oh, you're uh, almost immediately everyone knew who we were yeah. before we were even open. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small town, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, and you know, so during that time, it was just a lot of it was a lot of cosmetic stuff. Also, while we were waiting for equipment to be delivered, and while we were doing recipe testing and things like that, unfortunately, we weren't actually able to open. With freets, we were free, we were called freet and scoop, uh, and we didn't have freets for three, almost six months, I think. Uh, basically, we ran out of money. Uh, yeah. The the hood is so expensive to do, uh -huh. and it was because there wasn't a hood. In this location, there was not a hood right in this now. location, and again, if someone doesn't know, a hood is a big piece of metal with fans in it that is a safety thing. It sucks. It, it sucks air out uh, to keep fumes and things out, like, out from fryers, stoves, things like that. And it also has fire, uh, fire dispers, fire retardant. Yeah, uh, fire nozzles. suppressor. Yeah, yeah. fire suppressor. Okay, yeah. uh, and mm -hmm. that, if a fire gets out of hand, it, it sprays it down. It's a yeah. huge safety thing. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to make real money in life, I wouldn't install hoods because <laughs> whew, they are expensive. If that's your dream, yeah, get to it. Yeah. But so we we were running out of money, and we were we realized we either open now or we're going to have have some trouble. So we, yeah. we pressed pause on the freets, waited until the next year when we or the early next year when we had uh, a little bit more money uh, coming in, and then and then finished it. So yeah. for six months we would uh, people would ask, "What's a freet?" And we'd be like, uh, it's "Wait a thing. and see. It's a thing. Yeah. Please." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so the uh, um, let's talk about like the so the recipes like the actual the actual flavors of ice cream, right? You talked about like you were testing some flavors. Sure. Um, you you always every time every time I come in here, I, I don't catch any of like the the really like, classic you know like almost like safe comforting flavors, but instead. I, I, I always end up, anytime I come in here, I end up trying something that I've never tried before sure. and something that's new. Where does that come from? What's your process there? Do you just have ice cream tasting parties, like, you well, know, once you, a quarter? Or? You know how I said, uh, how I was, I, I got bored with things, mm -hmm. you know, I just, I couldn't find, that's where the, the, the new ice cream flavors come from, yeah. too. It's, I don't want to sound, again, too, too snooty, too bougie about it. Do it. Uh, but... Do you play an instrument? Yeah. Do you do. Uh, so, what do you play? Uh, guitar, piano. Yeah. Okay. So once you know the basics of, of you, you know your chords, uh -huh. uh, you know the keys, whatever. Oh okay. yeah. At that point, you can noodle around. You can you can futz mm -hmm. around, and you can make your own songs. Yeah. I in my head, I don't know how any new songs are ever made. <laughs> it, you know, it means I don't know enough about it. I like I, at this point, I think. Haven't all the chords been used in all the combinations? I know that's not true, that's, yeah. but because I, I just don't know about it. Yeah. It's the same with the ice cream. I know the, I, I, at this point, I know the basics. Uh -huh. And so when I 
or my wife uh, tastes a flavor somewhere else or starts thinking about a flavor, we just wonder, okay, if that let's would that be good in an ice cream? Yeah. How would it uh, how would it work? How would we make it? And it, usually, I can get it on the first try at this point. Okay. We're thinking about it. Very, very casual of you to say that. <laughs> I've learned. I, you know, it, you know, it, it's, it's over time. It's practice. Yeah. Exactly. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't start Im immediately, and so we like to say that we don't do we we don't do flavors that are going to to make someone's grandma, you know, just walk out. Uh -huh. You know, we want to make familiar familiar flavors just really, really well done. Yeah. You know, so sometimes we will have a vanilla, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to do it. We we call it dirty vanilla because we'll use brown sugar instead of white white sugar yeah. usually. Nice. Um, or we will, and, and you, you know, we always make sure we use real vanilla beans. Mm -hmm. In fact, we didn't do vanilla ice cream for two years because vanilla bean prices skyrocketed to something like five or six hundred dollars a pound. Reality is so, running a business. Yeah, and so yeah. we just didn't do vanilla. Uh, other places still made vanilla. Uh, they, you know, I knew full well that they weren't paying five or six hundred dollars a pound. Uh, they just did it different ways. Yeah. And, you know, so we will do traditional seems, flavors. I'm going to interrupt. That also no. seems like a very, like, like a bit of a blessing as well because that means, like, okay, we got to get really creative and we got to start looking in other directions. Sure. And also that, that all, I, I can imagine, like, how that would help, like, building your reputation and building your brand as an ice cream company that when you come in or an ice cream shop when you come in that yeah you're not necessarily you, you don't you're you're here to like try an adventure and try something different and try something unique right what flavor did you give um were there any flavors that you thought this is gonna i really like this and it just absolutely bombed or flavors that were like there i'm not sure about this one and it absolutely killed any surprises well the yeah, there, there's there's one that I didn't think was going to be hugely popular, but I thought it would be fun, and I tried to remember the name of it. Basically, I was looking for old ice cream flavors. Uh -huh. You know, thing. You know, I was basically trying to find ice cream shop menus from the 1950s and 1960s. Okay, cool. Uh, just to see if there's any flavors out there that. I know that, what it was. What was the name? Nestle Robula. Nestle Robula, mm -hmm. and it was so Nestle Robula was a flavor from. Uh, a place down in California, and it was a oh uh, chestnut. It was a chestnut flavored ice cream with a few other things in it, and it was a really popular flavor. And I didn't know how to really make it. I tried to, I faked it. Uh -huh. I never worked with chestnuts with roasted chestnuts before. Things like that. But there are some reasons that sometimes flavors just are generational, but they go out of fashion. Yeah. It, it just wasn't popular. And yeah. uh, I was hoping it would be because I, I, I liked the story of being able to say, this, this is an ice cream that was lost for 50 years, no one made it, and now yeah. I'm making it. Uh -huh. It's a great story, but it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> so. the, the ice cream that is our most popular, though, is, is Hokey Pokey, which is, mm -hmm. a, which is a variation on a Australian and New Zealand flavor. Um, it's also, I think they have it in, in England as well, uh -huh. part of the whole Commonwealth thing. It's usually a vanilla or just a cust or, or a, a sweet cream ice cream, and then they. Do you know what honeycomb toffee is? Uh, yeah. Honey, if you watch Great British Baking Show, they mm -hmm. make it all the time. Yeah. Uh, we make that here uh, ourselves, and then it's some variations. They cover it in chocolate and swirl it into the, the sweet cream. We don't cover that in chocolate for ours. We just make the, the honeycomb toffee, make the sweet cream, swirl it in. Lisa read about it one time and thought, hey, we should try making that. Mm -hmm. You know, she knew how to make honeycomb, again, pastry school. And we tried it, and, you know, it's got this gorgeous, these gorgeous pieces of top, orange toffee at the top uh -huh. when you make it. And the first day that we, we're, we're about, we're about at the fifth anniversary of Hokey Pokey making its, uh, its debut. The first day, it was hard to get anyone to try it. Yeah. Uh, it just looked weird, this bright orange candy. Like, it's really bright orange yeah. uh, from, from the, golden, the golden syrup that you use. And 
very quickly I was able, you know, eventually we were like, because we do free samples here, that, that was, actually that was one of the things that we decided day one, we thought of Freak and Scoop, as what, what's our, what's our whole vibe going to be? Day one, I knew that the first thing I was going to ask every single customer that came in is, can we get you any samples? Yeah. Because we want people to try. Yeah. And I eventually got people to try the, try the Hokey Pokey and all of a sudden it's, it started steamrolling and we sold bucket after bucket after bucket after of it. And it, from that first day that we had it, it's never left the dipping cap because yeah. it, became, it very quickly became so popular. But the day one, it was, people never heard of Hokey Pokey except yeah. for the dance. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and so we, that, was, that, was a, that was a surprise, a happy surprise. Because, you know, business-wise, it's a very, it's relatively simple to make, it's rel relatively quick to make, and so if, if your most popular flavor that you need the most of is something that's quick to make, yeah, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. So, the, uh, uh, we're going to run through a couple of quick questions sure. now, right? Favorite flavor that you've ever had? I mean, favorite child is what I'm asking for. Yeah, favorite child. I like anything with Oreos in it. Oreos are the best cookie in the world. Uh, strawberry Oreo. Strong, strong agree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I again, I don't want to seem too bougie. I, I'm not bougie. I don't want to seem silly about it, but I like Oreos. Excellent. And the um, oh, you got me. You got me absolutely stuck on Oreos. The uh, so, uh, what was the experience you had? First day you opened the door. Like, have you have you done? Is this your first business venture? Yes. Okay, this is first shot. Yeah. God, you know what? One, Take your shot. One, yeah, and and you know what? It's fine. Yeah, we've I've talked to businesses who have like you know their their successful place is like swing number five or six. One swing, just do it. Don't think too hard about it. Just do it. Yeah. Excellent. So, what was it like opening the door first day? Uh, it was <laughs> nerve wracking. Uh, there were there were mistakes made. Um, actually, our first day that we planned on opening, we couldn't be open because we were we were spending we spent the entire day previous trying to finish making all the ice cream uh -huh. uh, because it, and we didn't have a strong enough freezer. Again, things we didn't know. We thought we thought a chest freezer that was that that kind of set at negative ten would be good enough to to freeze all the ice cream when we were making it out of you know out of the, the batch freezer that we had. Uh -huh. It wasn't. We woke nope. up the next day and everything was still soft. Uh, and the only thing that was frozen was the sorbet. So soft, like no sink, soft or soft, yeah, like okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was on its way to being frozen, and I felt devastated. Good. Yeah, Lisa. Yeah, uh, but but again, you have a good partner. She was she was up when I was down, and you know that day we were open because we told people we were going to be open. So we were open, and we literally were just giving away scoops of sorbet, of yeah. apple cider sorbet, because that's all we had. So the next day, it had frozen. It was great. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously, if I went back in time and tasted the ice cream back then, I would probably be horribly embarrassed. Uh -huh. uh, you know, based on based on my my standards uh -huh. and how they are. But yeah. the first day, it felt great. You know, we had a, a couple rushes, and you know, I looked back at what the numbers were that day, and I could do that on my head, and it would be I consider that ah, that's a pretty day. Yeah. But for that day, it was wonderful. Yeah, and you know, everyone, you know, it felt like everyone was super supportive and everything. And uh, you know, it's been a roller coaster since then. All right. Um, so I'm going to combine the uh, um, lessons learned and advice. Right. So with those in you know, with with those parameters, um, if you're thinking about if if we're acknowledging like there are individuals out there who are thinking about maybe potentially opening their own shop whether it's like a specialty food shop or their own store or they've got their dream and they're really thinking about like I they want to they don't know how to start like they want to start but they're just not sure about next yeah. right what do you have what do you have for them what can what can you share with them from your experience here to help them out that that's hard if you do it, a bad job they'll fail so just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it, it's it's a matter of, of Choose one thing and get started. If you look at it as a whole, it's going to be overwhelming and you won't know where to start. Uh -huh. So de define what are the things that are necessary for you to start your business and then just choose one and, and, and go for it and yeah. like research it and figure out, okay, maybe that, that one's not the most important part uh -huh. here. Uh, if, you, if you get started by, let's say, going to the, the city and looking what it 
takes to build a business, you may get involved in those weeds and then not actually build your business. Yeah. But if you start building the business and then go and ask the city for, for permission later, you can figure that out. They'll yeah. help you figure it out. So okay. uh, it's don't I, I, going into advice a little bit. I think one of the things that we the the perfect synthesis of, of my wife and I is that she had professional training. She knew how restaurants ran, uh, at least small specialty food places like like we wanted to be. And I didn't know anything except how I taught myself how to make ice cream. Yeah. How we how we do our ice cream is different than almost any other place because lots of places will go to a place in Pennsylvania called Ice Cream University. Uh-huh. And they're gonna teach you how to make ice cream like like they teach everyone else. Yeah. And they'll teach you the fast way, they'll teach 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 you the cheap way. Yeah. And they and it's an acceptable way, it's a fine way that people that go there make great ice cream. Yeah. But I knew how I was making ice cream, I knew how I liked making ice cream, and I didn't want anyone else to tell me how how I should change that. So trust yourself. Trust your gut. And get yourself a Lisa. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, if, if you could clone her. Yeah. So uh, we're going to end with that. Sure. Kevin, this has been absolutely Thank great. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you. I appreciate Thank you for coming, coming on. on. All right. Anybody who's in the area, anybody who likes ice cream and fries, who doesn't like ice cream and fries, come sweet. on down, check it out. Uh, until next week, go get it. <laughs>